Okay, starting with this tutorial and over the course of the next month, I'm going to put out a whole series of tutorials on texture maps and cycles rendering because it's time. Basically, you know how to model, edit, animate, do all kinds of great things like that, but now the texture maps really play a crucial part. Uh, years ago I was not a very big fan of texture maps at all because they used to be very low resolution and so they look really terrible and they also took so much memory that your graphic card couldn't handle it. But nowadays even a entry-level graphic card has quite a bit of, you know, you can count on having a gig of RAM inside the thing so it can handle textures pretty nice. So here's a texture. This isn't even a very big image. This is a, I think 1024 by 768, no maybe a 1280 by 720 image. I forget. But what we're going to focus on is not so much generating UV coordinates like we did before in Blender Render, but we're going to focus on Cycles Render exclusively because it generates the nicest renderings. And in this case, we're going to use, instead of UV coordinates, we'll use generated coordinates. If you're not familiar with that, I'm going to show you right now. So for this sphere right here, let's look at what I have in the scene. I'll just go full screen on this real quick. In the node editor, here's the the material output to the surface, the diffuse color that we have set, the image texture which you've seen before when we loaded the image and here's my image file loaded in there and then I also have these texture coordinates and I have this connected to the vector input here from generated to there. Alright so let's go back just for a second and then here is our material right here and texture and then in the texture button just like we had done in Blender Render you come into here and this instead of being it'll say default otherwise and I just came in here and picked texture coordinates like that so now let's let's just try something let's add a so now let's try this in here let's add a cone to the scene All right. and so what generated does it just it basically automatically creates the co texture coordinates for you even if you deform the image it's going to remap it so you're not having to go mark seams and on map like we've done in other things but it doesn't give you precise control of the layout of it either but it's a great way to get started so for this object I'm going to give it a new material I'll just keep it diffuse I'll call it yellow in here for now and then I'm going to go over here to give it a texture like this whoops that's not the texture first before I do that I have to go give it a texture here remember we did this before add texture image texture and I'll go grab one and I'll make it this one here I'm not sure what it is and if I try and hook it up just like that I don't see anything on there and that's because see it's using this default nor now there's a texture button up here and I go in there and it's showing default into this vector position like that so since we haven't unwrapped it it needs a different type of input into here so we'll just use the automatic generated texture coordinates like this and then then it picks it up and puts it on there so it's mapped that image on here automatically for us all right we're just going to get used to doing that and then we'll do the uv coordinates later when you want to have more control but it's that's definitely more of a science so one thing also you can do is notice I'll go zoom in here is see I was trying to kind of move these windows so they're kind of more organized to the center like that and when you do these things kind of get in the way they cross over so you can fix that you know how you normally take your control key hold it down and swipe over here with the left mouse button down you get rid of that or you just grab this and hook that up with the left mouse button now instead I can hold down the shift key and with the left mouse button drag over it and it creates a new point in here so then I can just right mouse pick it up and move it into place like that so I'll do another one here and maybe move this one up here so you can keep your layout clean like that so things just don't run into each other alright I'll do another one here and I'll move that one over there okay so then you can move things around and stack them how you want like that and it's nice because it tells you where things are going right it's showing you that coming out of here going into there with an arrow how convenient you know these uh, developers of blenders are just top-notch but of course you gotta remember all these guys who code they're computer scientists physicists animators engineers you know mathematicians the whole nine yards so these guys are really smart people who are putting this together for us so we owe it to them to make them really cool stuff in return right nice cool images worlds they like to see that kind of stuff alright so 
Now we have this texture in the scene and then if I go into this into edit mode in this, I'll go look down here in material mode and I'll edit this and I'll grab this point at the top. Let me see am I in let's see if I'm in vertex select mode or not. There's my vertex. So I'll get a ver this vertex up here and if I'm in I'm gonna make sure I'm in there we go. I'll enable that too as well for proportional editing. And then I'm just going to move this thing around a little bit. So I'll squeeze it up and then you can see that it's automatically generating the texture coordinates of how it's going to lay it onto the scene. Alright, so that's one thing. And then it stays there. And then this, let's look at the cube over here just for a second. The cube, I have a different image mapped onto it. And it's mapping it around here. And one of the things to look at are these numbers here, the scale. So it's it's automatically mapped it onto all sides for me, that one single image like this. But if I double this up in the X direction, see what it does? It doubles the coordinates like this. But now watch if I do it in Z. I change this to Z to zero, it doesn't do anything. So Z is not really into effect for these generated coordinates. X and Y is what comes into play for generated coordinates like this. And then it changes that like that. If I do two by two, I get four on each side. All right. So you can control it that way. You can do the same thing with here. Zero. This doesn't matter in this case. So two by two on this one and two by two like that. All right. All right. We'll practice that. Use, you know, I would recommend using PNG files because you can use a transparent alpha layer associated with those files. We'll get into that as well. And um, yeah, experiment. Just have at it. It's a great way to get started. And then we'll do the more advanced texture coordinates in another lesson. All right, see you then.